welcome to this uh, session with Abigia. We're pleased to have you with us today and uh, coming to us from Nepal. So um, I hope we will enjoy this session on personal agility. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, over to you, Abigia. Thank you, John. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Abigia, and um, I come from Nepal. So let me just start sharing my presentation first. So here we go. So I'm going to talk about personal agility today. And I've named it uh, Personal Agility, a Framework Beyond Framework. So you'll get to know why I've named this a Framework Beyond Frameworks, yeah? Um, just a small intro. Um, I've been in the telco domain for uh, more than 11 years now. So I've been serving in this domain. And uh, currently, um, I am also uh, driving the Agile Transformation Program in my organization. And I'm a passionate uh, Agilist who is uh, passionate about driving in the people, processes, and tools and technology domain. So these are the, um, uh, these are the um, community I am active in. Um, so you can see it over there. Uh, I'm not gonna spend more time about over here. Um, all right, I would like to start by asking you all this question. Are you all leading the life you have always wanted to? Just a thought. Um, I'll come to this question later, but um, I just want you all to think about this for maybe five or ten seconds. All right. So do we feel this way? Do we feel hopeless and overloaded? So we have a lot of errands to do. Uh, we have the phones to answer. We have files of documents to check. Uh, the emails are pending. Uh, the boss's expectations, uh, they are never ending. So you, you're working on different projects. Uh, you might be taking up tasks that are like high priority, that have high tight deadlines. So, so you feel this way, right? Uh, you get a headache. You do not have time for yourself. You do not have much time to think. And you just need to work, work, and work. So, so what, is, what is missing over there then? Don't you feel like this sometimes? Like, don't you feel like a donkey was carrying a heavy load on the back? You know, like everything is a priority. So do you think that when everything is a priority, um, do you think that these things are really important to you? Well, everything is a priority, then nothing is a priority. Um, just take an example of a product owner. Uh, if you're in, in your project team and he comes and says that um, I need all these requirements to be delivered in the first sprint itself because everything is a priority. So what would you do? I mean, that's that's something that's that would be terrible, right? So you cannot have everything. I mean, every aspect of your workload and everything as a priority. So you need to segregate what is important and what is urgent. And that's where the personal agility uh, framework will come into act and help you out. So yes, you're doing a lot of things. You're carrying a heavy load on your back. So you are doing enough, but are you doing the right thing? You might be doing the things right, but just by doing the things right does not mean that you're doing the right thing. And that's what I precisely want to talk about in this session today. Um, have you ever come to, an, come to a situation where you have had to say no to your work? Or do you think that, you, have you ever been comfortable saying no? Your bosses come up with, your, with some expectations, you have peer pressures, uh, your colleagues want you to work on something, uh, you have or you have been assigned on, uh, on various projects, so you have your deliveries, but can you say no sometimes? You're so much overloaded with work. Uh, you have your family, you have your kids, you have your spouse. And saying no sometimes it is, yeah, is, is really a challenge many times. I mean, not, not only sometimes, but you know, most of the times saying no is, is a problem because uh, you do not want to take that risk. I mean, you know, you might be having a fear of losing your job if you say no to your boss. Or, you know, you might be having a fear of losing your project if you say no to uh, some assignment that you are delegated. But uh, like uh, Tony Blair uh, said, the art of leadership is in saying no, because it's very easy to say yes. 
say yes to all the work, say yes to all the priorities. That's very easy. But the moment you step out and say no, that's something that requires a lot of effort. And that, that's, that's an art as well, because it's, it's really difficult to say no. Well, this has happened to me as well. A um, couple of months back when I was working on a very critical project, and um, it, was, it was a CLM project, and I had the vendors on site. So they had traveled all the way from Europe, from India, from Australia, and I had a workshop with them. But at the same time, um, the CXO, he called me up and he said that, Avigya, you need to work on a project which needs to be delivered within two weeks. So it was a very critical project, a government-led project, where I was expected to deliver things in two weeks. So, so that came up to, as a surprise to me. First, I was happy that my boss had faith on me that I could carry out the work in two weeks. Again, I had this workshop going on. Um, I could not say no at, at all because of the expectation that he had on me. So I said that, okay, fine, um, I'll, 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 do, I'll do this, I'll take this uh, project and I'll make sure that I'll deliver it on time. Well, that was, that was a scenario when I could not say no, but I was lucky enough that my teammates were very, uh, very helpful. The, the, the project leads, um, the technical leads, the business leads, they were very helpful and I could hand my work to them and I could focus more on this new project that my boss had given. But at the same time, like if the team had not been helpful over there, then I would have had a very terrible situation. And it is a common case for most of us. It's, it's very difficult for us to say no at times. And this is where, I mean, this is why I'm questioning you all. Are you leading the life you have always wanted to? Because uh, I did a survey some uh, couple of months back with, uh, with my peers, my friends and family circles working in different domains, some in banks, some in software industries, or some in telco. And this is the result that I got. So this is in this is it in percentage. So, uh, um, well, it was not really surprising for me to see that most of them said that uh, they were not able to balance their work and life. Yes, in this, I mean, we are work working in such a fast paced uh, environment that it's really difficult for us to say no. So, so if you just look at the answers, um, somewhat yes is it's a very low percentage, maybe around seven or eight percent people who said yes. But most of the people they would say that they would want to change their everyday routine, or uh, they had days where sometimes the life was very tough, and some even said that they were doing things that are that are required or that are expected from them just for their family. So they had a family, they had to run uh, their business, and that's why they were leading the life, but they were not really happy or they were not able to balance their life the way they wanted to lead. A small disclaimer over here, uh, my talk has been is inspired by Peter Stevens' uh, personal agility system. So he's the founder of this particular framework. However, I'll be demonstrating my own personal experiences and um, you know, I'll be showcasing you. I'll be sharing with you how, why I thought that this is an important aspect for us, uh, for 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 us to you know like incorporate in our daily life. So I'll be talking about that uh, in the slides. To what is personal agility then? So it's it's a simple framework that helps you prioritize your goals, and it helps you or it allows you to more of what matters to you, which has an impact in your life, and discard less of the work that is of less importance. So it's only about it's all it's about it's all about setting up your priorities and living it, living your life up to it. What are things that are important to you? What are things that are urgent? So it gives you a clear definition of or a clear understanding of what what are the things that are important to you versus what are the things that are urgent to you. Uh, this comes from a survey that says that, uh, you know, which talks about stresses at work, workplace and uh, uh, employees leaving the, the companies and uh, they burning out. 
So uh, I've got a few points over here, which says that uh, gener Generation X reported the highest level of stresses in the workplace and thus have the highest risk of leave leaving the company. So which which is true uh, in, 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 you know, in most of the cases. And the reason why people quit is because they burn out. I mean, they're working on so many things that they burn out and they feel like their company only cares about profit and not their well-being. So many of the employees, they even said that their job uh, had a negative impact on their health. So with the cases of depression and anxiety, that's that's coming up so much. I mean, that's been booming these days. Uh, we could compare it to a negative health impact that this level of stress or this level of work pressure that's create that's 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 creating this kind of um, negative health impact. So the employees even said that they were unhappy at work and they didn't they felt like their bosses did not care about their happiness. So they only cared about the profits and not not the happiness. But we are lucky. I mean, uh, some of us, maybe we are lucky that we have had uh, we have flexible working hours. Um, maybe some of our uh, organization, they are not very strict in terms of, uh, you know, the working times or the leaves that we have. So in that case, I mean, we we uh, I mean, I also might consider myself as a very lucky person because I do not have that. I do not face that um, at work. So more, maybe uh, some of you also think that you are lucky in this case that you do not have more anxiety or depression because of work. Uh, this is um, uh, this is my calendar outlook. Um, before I started using the personal agility framework. And sometimes it used to be even uh, worse than that, worse than that because uh, you know the number of hours that you spend in meetings was like a way like you know it was like more than sixty or seventy percent of your working time you spend in meetings. So if you also see that um, uh, as per research, um, the average productive hour that an individual spends at work is. Uh, almost four to five hours. So, so that's only, that's when you are actually working or you're executing your work. And rest of the time you're spending on meetings or you're preparing reports. So this is how my uh, calendar looked as well. However, like after I started using the personal agility system, uh, this is how it got reduced and it looks beautiful. And uh, I've been able to prioritize my work at least. So uh, I'll just show you this uh, the, the way the human uh, brain functions. So if you're working on, let's say, multiple tasks, I have five tasks over here. So this is the speed at which your brain would function, quite slow. Compared to this one, I've removed two tasks from here, and the speed is quite high. So this. this this gives a clear example that uh, the more number of tasks you are involved in, your efficiency is going to degrade. Um, I have an example with me, uh, a colleague who was working with me on a project. Um, I've worked with him on several projects and he's a very efficient guy. But um, then, I mean, he was working on, I think, uh, five or six tasks, which was very critical. And one day uh, when we had uh, this um, uh, rollout project, um, something happened that caused us a loss of million, millions of dollars. And that was all because of a small mistake that this particular guy, he forgot, pressed the commit button on the database that he was working on, which caused a lot of transactions to fail. And we, have, we incurred a heavy loss during this time. So a very efficient guy who had been working with me on several tasks whom I relied on uh, very well, um, very efficient person, you know, like committing such mistakes, like just hitting one commit button on the DB and causing a huge loss is, some, is, a, is a good example of how your brain would stimulate if you are uh, put into multiple tasks or let's say like five or six or many tasks at one time because we all are humans we are not machines and we operate in some particular manner that you know like uh, we cannot be compared to machines 
So what I came to know is uh, the, better, the, the, the better you manage your time or the way, I mean, if you're doing the things right, then your productivity is going to increase. The quality of work that you are delivering would increase, which would eventually lead you to a happy, content, and a successful individual. So it could be at work or in your professional life. So it's all about this tiny, uh, you know, the tiny tactics of time management, of prioritizing your things, of prioritizing the prioritizing your work in such a way that you do the right things. You not only do the things right, but you do the right things so that you can um, deliver more. You're more happy. You're content. As you're, you're a successful individual. Uh, so I'm going to start my story over here. Uh, this is about how I came across the personal agility um, uh, framework. So uh, a couple of years back, um, I was uh, I was working on a million dollar project on a migration project where um, some 20 million sub customers had to be migrated to another platform. So it was a huge project and it had taken like some eight or nine months and we've been working on this on it continuously. So once the project got finished, um, I decided to go on a holiday. So I thought of going to uh, Sydney, uh, where I have few of my friends and uh, some of my cousins as well. So I thought that I would go to Sydney. So I went there and uh, one fine day, uh, I thought that uh, I would go to the Blue Mountains. Uh, now, if you've been to Sydney, to the Blue Mountains, you would know that this is a very famous place, uh, some 50 kilometers west of Sydney, uh, where you can have, where you can you come across a very good scenic uh, view of the eucalyptus forest. You have good, nice waterfalls over there, and you have the bushwalking trails as well. So uh, this fine day, uh, it was a weekday, and my cousins and my uh, friends, we went to work. So I set out on this journey alone. Uh, I took the tour bus, um, the, tour, the guide, the bus driver was the tour guide and um, there were different points uh, in this journey. So from point A to point B, you, you would drop us from the bus and we could we would spend like some five minutes in that point. And then again, we stay, step into the bus and reach to another point where we again spent like some 10, 15 minutes and we had a look around the forest, uh, the waterfalls and everything. The scene, we had the scenic view. And that's how we went. Um, this is this is a trail that we followed. And uh, there was a point like uh, there was a point where uh, this driver said that uh, we could walk for 30 minutes or uh, he would drop us in the bus, uh, which would take uh, maybe like two minutes. But as we were as it was about to be lunchtime, so it was nearly 1230. Uh, we had an option to walk to Echo Point. Where there was a, where you could have a scenic view of the Three Sisters. Uh, the three, three Sisters is actually the three cliffs uh, that is very popular in the Blue Mountains. So you could have a scenic view of these three uh, mountains from this echo point, and where the driver said that he would drop us. Uh, so we had an option: either we walk to echo point from this particular point, or he would drop us in the bus. So I thought that um, walking, you know, taking a walk for 30 minutes is fine because I did not have anything else to do and I would enjoy the walk and I would just see things around. So I said that um, just let me know the route and I'll, I'll just walk. So we just had to follow the trail. And there was a French girl uh, I met during this tour who was also of uh, similarly of my age and we gelled up quite well. Uh, we started talking and we started chatting and both of us, we wanted to walk instead of taking the bus. So we, we set out on this trail and we started walking. Um, as we started walking, uh, I would compare this to the upman stages of team performance where uh, in the initial stage, in the forming stage, you are very excited about your journey or your new aspiration. So you are optimistic of things, uh, about things, you're op you have nice plans and you're very excited. So that's that's where I mean, I, I compare, compare it to that stage. So we were in the forming stage. We were excited. We wanted to take a walk, uh, walk for 30 minutes and reach to Echo Point. So we started, uh, started on this journey. 
And as we started sending, I mean, as we started walking through the trails, uh, we came across a giant stairway. So it, uh, I mean, I came to know that it had some thousand steps later when I came out of this jungle. But um, then uh, we did not know, like, uh, there was a staircase that we had to take. So we started going down and we started going down and down and down. So this staircase, I mean, it had some thousand steps. Uh, this cliff, uh, the three sisters itself, uh, they are like some 950 meters tall. So uh, one of them is like 920 meters tall and 950 meters tall. So three cliffs, some 950 meters tall with each of them having staircases of maybe thousand steps. So we started descending down and uh, it was already like 25 minutes but we could not see this echo point so we thought that uh, maybe it would take some more maybe five or ten minutes uh, we'll have to walk so we thought that let's go on so we we you know like we continued descending the steps so uh, probably we've we'd already descended some 400 or 450 steps uh, that's when we started that's when we started questioning ourselves is this the right move are we going in the right direction? We had the maps with us. Um, we thought that we were following the trails as well because we could see these uh, tiny, you know, like, uh, I mean, we could see that it was marked that uh, this is this is the way or this forest is some five kilometers or this. So we were following the trail and we thought that we are going in the right path. But, uh, you know, as time passed, we started questioning ourselves. Uh, it was already um, 30 minutes past, 35 minutes past. 40 minutes passed, but we could not see anything. I mean, we could not see echo point or anything close to that, you know, like anything close to an, a habitable place anywhere around. But um, luckily, I mean, um, after walking for maybe some 25 to 30 minutes, uh, we found some, we found two more French guys who were also exploring in this forest and they were also lost. So by then we knew that uh, we four, all four of us, we were lost. So this was a kind of fear that started generating inside me because uh, I started fearing if I get lost in this jungle, I might be dead. And we all four, we are foreigners and we do not know much about uh, this jungle or we do not even have the emergency, uh, emergency number. So we do not know whom to call or what to do. And we could see our phones, uh, they did not have any network. So at this time, it was like, it was, it was, uh, if you compare to the storming stage, it was similar, it, we were in a similar stage. I mean, we started questioning our moves. Uh, we were like, uh, we thought that, uh, I mean, we were hopeless and we thought that uh, whatever we're doing is not, is, is not correct or we've, you know, we've lost. I mean, we're lost in the jungle. So, but, but we do not have any option rather than to, you know, uh, follow the trail and come out come out of the jungle. So we had a shared goal. We had a coercion. We had a team. We had a shared goal that we have to come out of the jungle. Otherwise, we are dead. We do not have any other options, but we are dead. We're completely dead if you cannot come out of the jungle. And the jungles in uh, Australia, they are not, uh, you know, like, uh, I mean, you get, you have uh, dangerous, you have venomous snakes and you have... Uh, the scorpions and dingoes over there. So it's it's not really safe for, you know, people who are not aware or who are not really used to this kind of bushwalking trails. So it was not safe for us, but we did not have any option. So we descended all those uh, thousand steps. Um, we came down, uh, we came into the stark forest and uh, we could see a signboard which said that um, there was a village, Lura village, some one kilometers far. So we thought that, okay, if you walk for another one kilometer, then we'll come across the village. So that gave a sign of relief. So we continued walking and we came to this Lura village. It was nothing, but it was just a hut over there. And it was some, it was a village there. It was habitable some, you know, in the 18th century, but now there's nothing. So we, we were again scared. I mean, we were like, we did not have any hopes. We were like, we were scared to death. I mean, all four of us, we thought that we would die. And I started questioning myself then. Why am I here? Why did I come to Australia first? Uh, why did I come to Blue Mountains? And why am I here in this jungle? And if I get to come out of this jungle, 
then what are the things that I want to do? So that's when I started uh, realizing the importance of my life. And I started thinking that I am here. I have been, I am born for a purpose, to serve some purpose, and I'm not here to die in this jungle. So I started questioning. So what, what are the things that I want to do? What are the things that's important to me if I come out of this jungle? So my family was important. My career is important. What are, what are the things? What are the other things that are real, that really matters to me? And what are the things that I really want to do? So I started seeing this kind of uh, difference. You know, the, the me, I mean, that was there 30 minutes back and the me that was there inside the jungle, I could compare those to, uh, what do you say, the behavior inside me or the feelings or the emotions inside me. And that's when, uh, you know, like uh, we were lucky enough that we, uh, we had this goal and then uh, we gelled up quite well. Uh, we thought that we do not have any options rather than coming out of this jungle. So we descended down from one cliff. Uh, we walked for some maybe two or three kilometers and we came to the other cliff. So it had three cliffs, three sisters, three cliffs. So uh, we had to climb up the other, uh, other cliff as well. So another, maybe probably around 1,000 steps we climb up. So we started ascending the, the steps. And um, as soon as we saw some kind of uh, sunlight, we had a ray of hope because we could see sunlight now and we were somewhere close to the roads. So uh, we started, We I mean, we continued our journey and we did not give up. So that was the most important thing that we did not give up. Uh, with the fear that we would be dead if we do not, uh, you know, perform. So it was similar to a stage where you are norming and you're performing. You do not have any options. You know that you have to get your work done. Uh, you have a goal and you start performing. And uh, luckily, after, you know, getting lost in this jungle for almost three and a half hours, uh, we could come out of it. So... So during this time, um, I had a few lessons that I learned during this journey. Um, uh, these, these were the lessons that I learned. Um, what really matters to you? Uh, what are your priorities? So I started questioning myself. Uh, collaboration was really important because if I had been lost in that jungle alone, then probably I would not have been able to you know, come out of it. Uh, it was the teamwork and the collaboration and the way we gelled up as a team that uh, made us come out of this jungle. Uh, the change was really uncomfortable. It was really, really uncomfortable coming out of your comfort zone and exploring the jungle and coming out of it. So, so that's, that's really uncomfortable. But it is really important that you say yes to the right moves. Do not give up and say yes to the right moves. Yes, we were lost. But, you know, um, having faith that we would come out and, uh, and, and sticking to our moves that we needed to come out of this jungle was something that was important during this step. And I realized that there are only fewer emergencies in life and not everything is an emergency or, you know, like not everything is equally important or urgent. So I started, um, I started having this uh, distribution between emergency and importance things that are important might not be emergent or, or urgent but there could be some urgencies in life which could be important which are important and these are the things that has to, that have to be dealt uh, in a very you know in a, in a short period and in a precise uh, manner so prioritizing your work is important and setting up your long-term and short-term goals is equally important because your long-term goals could be, uh, you know, like you getting, um, you know, like it's something that would serve you for a purpose. So it's, it's something that you want yourself to be seen in maybe 10 years time. But the short-term goals are something that you want to achieve within a week or a day or a month. And these things could be really important as well. So the most important questions, uh, I've, uh, I can correlate this from Peter Stevens' um, framework, and I've taken this from his framework as well. So these important questions, I mean, I use these questions before I start on a journey or a new task as well. So uh, the important questions are, what did I do last week? Uh, what could I do this week? 
who could help me because uh, at times um, I might I might need help from people to get some tasks done. Um, what do I want to get done? So what is the outcome or what is the goal that I am expecting? Um, what is important and urgent? Again, so have a clear distinction between things that are important and urgent and what are the things that really matters? Because not everything is a priority to you. There could be few things that, are, that, that could really matter to you and maybe some of the things that you could discard and learn to celebrate even the smallest success that you achieve in life. It does not need to, you, you don't really need to throw big parties when you, you know, finish a certain task or complete a, uh, on a certain project, but you could just have a small celebration, a pizza party or a Coca-Cola party. So that's how you celebrate life. Don't forget to do that. And um, as, uh, as I am a project manager as well, and I've been working in various projects, um, I, I use this model every day uh, to map the things that I'm going to do the very next day. So I use this model every day. Um, what is the goal? What do you want to do tomorrow? Uh, what is happening? Uh, what are the options that I have? What I could do and what I will do. So let's say like if I'm working on four projects at the same time, then what is my focus for tomorrow? So this model helps me uh, identify my goals for the very next day. You could use this for, uh, you know, like your long-term goals as well, or even if you are uh, working on some crucial uh, task, then also you can work, uh, you can use this model. But I use this on a daily basis. And this is where, you know, like uh, this is how I've structured my priorities. Uh, I use the GROW model. Uh, this is my long-term long -term, uh, priorities that I've mapped what are the things that are important to me or what are the things that matters to me? So family, health and business, um, this could be the case for many of us. I mean, I mean, some of you might deviate from this, um, this definition, but uh, for most of us, yeah, our family is important, our health is important, our business is important. So, um, so what is important then? In terms of family, um, I do not want to bring my work to home. I want to spend more time with my kids. I want to take them out. So that's that's an important thing for me. In terms of health, uh, I want to do some workout, maybe some yoga or um, get get into the treadmill or the cross trainer. In terms of business or in terms of work, um, I might have some, you know, I, I want to complete a CST or I, I need to finalize a promotion list. So these are the things that are important, but not what is, what is, but, but, but what is important to you might not always be urgent. So if you map the things that are urgent from the things that are important, then I say that, yes, uh, taking my kids out maybe this week is important. Meeting this person for business, let's say like some XYZ for business is important. In terms of health, uh, doing, taking a yoga class or practicing yoga tomorrow itself is urgent. So with the things that are important, uh, here are like um, five things that are important, but um, I've come up with, uh, you know, like only three things that are urgent. So that's how you map your priorities. And similarly, you can do this for your entire week, things that are important and urgent to you. So what do you want to accomplish within this week? Um, the health checkup, certification exam, taking your kids out. So that's how you map your um, you know, like your your weekly journey, and you see what has been done overall last week. You've done you've done with the promotion list. You've taken taken the kids out. So that's how you map certain things. So um, if you look at this uh, particular chart, then um, you know before using this uh, PAS, the personal agility system, there were so many things that mattered to me. The morning exercise, taking kids out, CST, health checker, bringing no home for, bring no office work to home. So there are so many things. Maybe we are probably nine or ten things that were important. But when I started using this, um, the personal agility framework, I see that only few things are really important or re really important to me, and that really matters to me. So, so I've, I've come up. I mean, I picked four things out of this nine. I mean, ten or twelve list. And uh, probably you could also use this um, for mapping your priorities and your long-term and short-term goals. 
So this is how my PA wall look like. Uh, I share it with my hubby and um, I've started using it with my hubby because uh, both of them, we work in, uh, in, in telco sector and uh, we are equally busy. So, and we have a kid who is now five years old. So we need to take care of her. We, we have to make sure that we give her enough time as well as we want to perform well in our uh, work piece as well. So that's how we map our um, our priorities for the entire week. So Monday to Monday to uh, uh, Friday, I have this, and uh, Saturday Sunday is uh, is is a um, you know like it's a break, so we do not map anything or we do not set priorities for Saturday or Sunday, or we do not have this kind of chart for that. But um, you know, like after having this, you can see that. Um, you know, you don't want to overlap your work with your husband's work so much, with your spouse's work so much that you do not give enough time to your kids. And the main objective of having this ball is having a work-life balance where we can give equal time to our families as well as to our work. So nothing is hampered. So that's the main objective of using this chart. And the stickies, they, you know, like um, I have to have new stickies every day or every week. So we do that, we practice that, and this has been helping uh, us a lot, me as well as my hubby. He's also, he started enjoying um, using this framework, so it, it has helped us in some ways. And uh, this is a business model canvas, uh, which he could use, or use, which he could also use for personal agility canvas. Um, uh, like I said, that um, I'm also, you know, like I'm also heading the Agile transformation journey in my organization. So I use this chart, um, uh, you know, like uh, to, to check on the things that are, that are that are needed. So the value proposition is there. So what what is your value proposition, and how would you, but not the team, would add value to this particular task that you are undertaking? Uh, what are your goals? Um, how are you interacting with others? So you know, are you able to trust people? Are you open to feedbacks? Uh, can you take in criticism? So that's all about your interactions with people, which is equally important. Uh, the mark inside you. So what are the impediments inside you that is uh, stopping you from achieving your goals? That's one thing that you need to work upon or you need to think about. Uh, and what are the desired changes that you want to see in a particular task that you have undertaken? Uh, maybe you want to become more agile or you want to have an open mindset or you have you have some behavior issues that you want to work upon. So these are the desired changes that you want to see. Um, the environment, uh, how is the environment playing a vital role in all these things? Uh, the fears and concerns, of course, because if you are working on some tasks, then uh, you would always have some fears or risks or concerns. So you could jot them over here. At the same time, you would have strengths in this particular area. So what are your strengths? And based on all these things, uh, you come up with your action plan, plan A and plan B. So what are the actions that are required? So you work upon them. I mean, yeah? you've got about, about five minutes left. Yeah, sure. And this is, I, ca I come to the last slide uh, for this session. How do I cultivate personal agility? Adopting a growth mindset, of course, because uh, if you do not have that mindset in you, then you do not have the learning capabilities. You cannot take criticism. You are not open to feedback. Then it's something that's that's going to be a hindrance. Uh, embracing change, it is important. And um, I re read this statement in some restaurant. Uh, it said that life begins at the end of your comfort zone. So I think that's very true as well. And the same thing when I was lost in the jungle in, in Australia. So embracing change is difficult, but it might not be as scary as you think that it is. So once you get into it, maybe it's not that scary. So uh, try to embrace change and, of course, lighten your work because you cannot be a donkey ca carrying a heavy workload with lots of priorities. And when everything is a priority, then you cannot lighten your workload. So it's really important for you to lighten your workload as well. So that's all I have to say for today. Uh, thank you very much. You could connect me on LinkedIn or you could write to me. Um, that's my uh, that's my email address. Uh, thank you very much. Uh,
taking them in. Um, I will just jump into the Q&A section. Um, personal agility like a personal Kanban, I don't find much difference. Can you please help me understand? Yes, uh, yes, um, this is a very interesting thing. Yes, it is uh, very much comparable to uh, the Kanban that you use every day. But uh, the difference is uh, the Kanban board would not really give you and, uh, you know, like it would not really say what are the things that are important to you or uh, what are the things that are your top priorities or what is important and what matters to you. And this is where, you know, you use personal agility, where you have a framework which defines the things that are important or the things that matters to you. So unlike uh, the Kanban, which does not say the things that matters to you, um, the personal agility system or the personal agility framework would talk about the things uh, that matters. To you. Yeah, I hope I've answered that. Uh, any other questions? Someone's asking that we'd love to get the link or reference to the personal agility board. Are you going to be able to share that with uh, people? Yes, I would be sharing my presentation, so that that should not be a problem. And I already have a few on in SlideShare, so if you just go on SlideShare and check on the personal agility framework by Avika Pokhal, then probably you'll have the link to it. Does anyone else have any other questions? Any reference books Any which reference mention books. personal agility? Yes, uh, if you go and uh, search for Peter Stevens on personal agility, uh, then he has a very nice handbook as well. Um, I follow him as well. I started following him after I got lost in the jungle. And, um, you know, like um, I came to know about this term, the personal agility framework. So I came to know and I started following him on YouTube. So if you go and check... Uh, uh, Lisa Atkins, uh, Maria Materialy, and uh, personal, I mean, uh, Peter Stevens on YouTube, then you'll have a lot of um, um, things that you could re refer to. And you have a handbook by uh, Peter Stevens. So you could go on Google and search for it. Someone else has asked, what if there is no such intersection between the things that are important to me and urgent? Um, well, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, there, there could be an intersection or there could be, they could be mutually inclusive or they could be mutually exclusive. So there could be two different things, things that are important at work or things that are important to you in your personal life and things that are really urgent. So let's say like, um, you need to deliver a project or you need to deliver a BRD in um, maybe today. So that is something that is urgent when it comes to work. But when it comes to your overall, you know, like um, with your work and life balance, and if you come to your long-term or short-term goal, then that might not be very important to you as an individual. But when it comes to work, then you have to submit a BRD is something that's urgent. So there could be tasks which are not interlinked or they could be tasks which are interlinked. So it could it could be both ways. This is just an example. The BRD is just an example. 